Hello everybody, this is Outlaw from the Current Cartoon TV, coming you live from our new studio. Hey guys. I'm joined with today is Gundam. What's up? And guys, sorry about the delay, we have been very busy the last two weeks, this is why this is going to be a double review episode. Heck yes, four and five. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and start on number four. What is that synopsis for the episode four? Synopsis of episode four is After Jack defeats the last daughter of Aku, two are swallowed whole by a gargantuan beast, and now Jack and the unwilling Ashi must uh, escape, find a way to escape the beast. Oh yes, and that was a good episode. So uh, we start off seeing uh, Jack waking up from his little fall from the uh, great heights of them defeating the uh, daughters of Aku. And uh, he sees one of them lying dead, the one that he punched. Pretty much one punched. Yeah, she got knocked off the edge of that one with one, like, it reminded me of um, uh, Street Fighter move, but that's just me. All right, and then you see these crows uh, all around them yelling murderer, murderer, murderer. And then him just going out like, no, they chose the path. They have chose their destiny, which goes back to the episode before, where he says, leave now and live, or stay and die. And I think that was a really good dynamic in this episode, because it shows that he's still, even after fighting real humans and killing real humans, he's still having the, the battle within himself as well, that is this, is it worth fighting anymore? So, uh, what did you like about the episode the most? It was a very different take on the whole getting eaten by a monster thing, and like them going through each section was like a different color, different style. I loved every second of it, and the music was fantastic. And the fight scenes inside the, the beast was amazing. Do you get those uh, creatures about to uh, eat uh, Jack and Ashi first? One of them loses a limb. Jack uses that limb as a sword. And then he still has that mastery swordsmanship down pat. Yes, he does. I miss I miss him having a sword very much too. I think that uh, eventually they'll just they'll have to get it back. But until then. Jack will find anything and he'll make it the best buff that he can for any situation. And in this one, and in all the different sections, he finds something to help get away. Is it me or is it, is it uh, uh, she gets knocked out pretty easily, quickly, too? <laughs> Once she just hit herself in the head with a piece of tree, the other time, uh, again, sucker punch pretty much when uh, Jack actually has her chain to his back. That's true, and you can see how much she's still fighting him every second of the of the journey out there. She does not like him, wants to kill him. She's like, the minute you're back to turn, you're dead. Everything is, and Jack will not stop. He will continue to save her from anything that comes up. Yeah, Jack saves her uh, multiple times during this little journey. Uh, one time. Uh, from the fall when he actually grabs her and they go into the uh, vowels of the uh, beast. The second time is when the uh, beast actually uh, ate her, put her in her mouth, he cut open the teeth. Oh my god, that was the most painful thing to see. <laughs> if you ever had dental work, yeah, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The third time was actually uh, from the falling into the acid pit. Mm -hmm. And that whole last uh, jump out with all the flying creatures and everything was really good. The art style on that was fantastic. How you can only see the skeleton of the, of the monsters trying to eat them. But in the certain light, you can see its full body. It reminds me, there's a couple of fish that actually have some kind of... Um, camouflage. Camouflage like that, right. And I thought that was a really good dynamic. And just on the edge of my seat the entire time. Loved it. Yeah, and uh, I like how Jack still honors his uh, semi bishido uh, and they're not allowing an innocent to die. So even though uh, she is not as innocent as most people think she is, she was misled by her mother. She doesn't know the right from wrong. So I like how Jack is trying his best to show her the truth. I agree. And I think that at the end when they're all sitting there on this little island, you can finally see it in her own expressions that this may not be the truth of what she's been fed her entire life. Right. I loved it. Yeah, the fact with that ladybug and all that, we get a little flashback of how she's uh, childhood again, her training, and the ladybug comes in. The mother picks the ladybug up, like, this is not the will of a coup. Crushes it right in front of her. But then you see this ladybug fly over to Jack, and I bet uh, she's like, he's going to destroy it like everything else. He lets the ladybug fly away. This is where the turning point on Ashi is now confused and doesn't know what is true and what is lies. Very true. And 
I, after, all in all, I have to give this episode a five out of five. Still, it's still an amazing episode. They're still perfect, as far as I'm concerned, for everything going this far, and I cannot wait to see more. Yeah, I was almost gonna give this a four out of five or a four point five out of five, but I watched both episodes, and this episode really leads into the next episode. So this episode definitely gets a five out of five for me. So that brings us to the next episode of Samurai Jack. Episode 5, which actually is episode 96, as far as the uh, title of the episode is concerned. And we have a sort of theory on that. We'll, we'll touch upon that later. Um, the synopsis of the episode is that Samurai Jack fights a, to save a group of enslaved people from being harvested as a power source against a mega robot. Meanwhile, Aku fights off an attack from humans that try to uh, take his home base. Right, so... Um... We definitely see this uh, beginning of the episode. We see these three armies show up. Uh, look like Spartans, and then it looks like a uh, freaking uh, Scots, Scottish, Scottish. We have them, and then uh, people on rhinos. I, I just can't think what the, who would ride into battle on a rhino. If you do that, you're the, a the baddest ass guy in the freaking world, or the most stupidest guy in the world. But anyways. <laughs> We see these uh, three armies uh, converge onto Aku's base and start attacking it. And I thought the overall design of the episode was fantastic. Did you see when he emerged from the his home and as a ball, that is a wrecking ball, literally a wrecking ball, just mowing down entire sections of the army with, with ease? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a uh, song, but we're not going to go there. Yeah. And what did, what did you like about this? No, what I liked about this episode was that we actually get to see the Scotsman back. He's been a beloved character in the series. Uh, we also see Jack showing Ashi the truth behind Aku's power, his evil, corruption ways. He goes to this one place that has this one tree out of the middle of this designated area. And he tells the story to Ashi that this used to be a land full of these trees, yet... Aku has destroyed all of them except leaving one. Mm -hmm. And she's like, why did he just leave one? It actually shows how powerful he is and how cruel and evil he truly is. Pretty much showing that I have the power to destroy everything. This is a reminder of my true power. I love every second of that too because they did such a good dynamic between his power and what the land was before and after because if you notice the music of this episode was amazing because every section before they get to Aku's world pretty much was all lighthearted, all you know, epic sounding and as soon as it hit Aku land and Aku city, it was everything was dark, dreary, the soundtrack reflected that and just nothing more than just evil incarnate like Aku is. Right. And another thing I do like about it is the story that Jack tells Ashi how the stars were made. That was a nice little light tone story. And it's like something that a Japanese folklore would actually tell their children. And that's where it came from. It came from Jack's mother. Every step of the way, she's she's still kind of weary of if, if it's true or not. And then you can see in her eyes the moment she realizes that everything she was told was a lie. And, and Aku's grasp does control all and, and is evil 100%. Yeah, and to the point where Ashi's like, what can we do to stop this? And what was Jack's response? Jack says that there is no stopping him. He's been fighting for so many years, still hasn't been able to defeat him. At this point, he is tired of it. It's over. There's no defeating him. The fact that someone else actually believes that there's a way is an amazing thing. Yeah, pretty much Jack says there is no hope, there is no saving. We get to this uh, little town here, and it looks like it's been already destroyed by Aku, or uh, Aku's uh, monsters or anything like that. We don't know who went in and destroyed it. And there's these uh, furry people there, and one of them still lives. Uh, she and Jack goes to them and say, what happened? They took all the babies, all the children, to the factory. And the next thing we see is Jack and uh, she go into the factory to save them. And we get a really good fight scene between Jack and the, the children. They come out there and they're just rampaging. Just they have no control. It's just all this. It's almost like piranhas. 
in, in water, and he tells Ashi to find the source of what's controlling them while he takes care of uh, them without killing them, of course. And then you get this fight between Ashi and the, the mega robot who's uh, trying to control the children. And it's at that moment you see her really like, I need to stop this. This is something that cannot happen. This is not how the world works. And we get this very, very good action scene between them and Jack. We actually see Ashi defeating the guy that's actually controlling the fur babies. I'm going to call them fur babies. Mm -hmm. But yet, something went wrong. When she destroyed them, they all passed out. And Jack thought he did it. He killed them all. Yep. He thought that it was... That he finally... I mean, killing people is one thing, but killing children, that I think that pushed him a little over the edge. And when he saw that and that... that uh, person, that being that came that's in every episode, you know, pretty much thus far has been who we think is deaf. He tell he call he comes to Jack and says it's time, and Jack's like, "You're right," and that's and they go off into the unknown, and we have no idea what they're where they're going. But Ashi comes back, the children are actually alive, but then she can't find Jack. You're right, and that's how the episode ends. We cannot find Jack. We got a little preview of next episode, and it looks like Ashi is looking for Jack. Mm-hmm. You get to see these beautiful worlds in the next episode, so I can't really wait for that. Uh, what do you give this episode rating? Uh, five out of five. Absolutely loved it. Loved the dynamic. I love seeing... Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but in general, it reminded me a lot of uh, Sonic's Saturday morning cartoon, where you would go to like all the places that robotic rules and with all those machines and everything. I, I, I loved it. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to give this a five out of five. The storytelling in this is just getting so much better and so much good. So there's one problem we have. Half of the series is over now. We only have five more episodes left. How are they going to end this? It's going to be fantastic, whatever it is. They've been working this long, and you can tell every episode is just a immense amount of work. Both physically, mentally, everything, artistically, musically. They'll, they'll get to the end, and it'll be great. Yeah, we've also got some great uh, work going on here. Um, I can't wait till Zontan actually uh, see some of this and actually do some artwork. Uh, if you guys don't know who Zontan is, uh, Google it. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Same. And uh, also, uh, you might have to check out her Twitter because uh, it's already been done. <laughs> oh, yeah, it has. <laughs> it's already been done. Uh, all right, guys. Um, once again, thank you guys all for tuning into our channel here. Sorry again for the delay. Uh, please like, subscribe, and and get those notifications from our channel here. Uh, we also have now a, a Patreon page. Uh, I haven't really set up any goals for us yet. Uh, I don't know what I need as an equipment, but let me know what you guys think. What do I need to make this channel better? Please leave a comment down below, and as every time, keep supporting, and we thank you so much for watching the channel, guys, all right? You guys, keep on keeping awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, keep, stay awesome, guys. Peace and chicken grease.